Hey kids, John Britt here. Hey, I thought I'd show you what I'm doing, maybe how I glaze a little bit. Might help somebody. Uh, I am working right now on these little ewers. I'm getting back into uh, shape here because I was out for a while. I'm just trying to see how the glazes work, how the um, kilns firing, all that stuff. Got to rewire it. Here is what I'm working on is these little ewers like this. I have a video which shows how to make them. They're multi-sectional. And then what I first do is dip. They're a dark clay called Standard 266. This will come out very, it'll be like this kind of dark here. Uh, very dark. And then well, after it's fired to cone 6 in electric. And then what I do um, is I'll dip them in this laterite slip. And so this laterite, uh, it's a terra sidge. I just call it a slip or a sidge. And basically I ball mill laterite for two hours. You can decant it if you want. But uh, I dip it in real quick and it, it'll get this kind of color, like splotchy color. If I dip it in a little longer, it'll be darker like this. And then um, I'll show you the bottom there. See how it's like a little uneven. I kind of like it when it's, it makes it look more like reduction -y fired if you have it uneven. So what I uh, thought I would do would be try some variations of that I wanted to show you. So this is frost porcelain. I just dipped the ladder right in it and so it's real nice and uh, terracotta-y looking. Then as I add frit, 3134, I added 5, 10, 15, 20%. And you can see how the color changes. So it might be nice down in this range. Uh, I also wanted to get it to stick on there a little better. If you don't get it hot enough, sometimes it doesn't stick on well. So I thought I would do that. So this is probably a somewhere in these between these two would be good. And then here it is on the standard 266. Uh, and when you dip it thin, it'll be splotchy, a little thicker, like I said, it'll be a little more covered. And then um, here it is on a clay called Trina Buff. It's just a lighter stoneware. And uh, then here it is, I put some white slip underneath it. It's actually Amico Velvet I just had laying around, but you can use any white slip. And then that'll help you get... Uh, some more variation of color. So, you know, what I could do is take this vase, brush on white slip unevenly, and then dip the terracidge on, and then you would get some real uh, interesting, you could do a lot of stuff with that. Anyway, it's fired at E1. Okay, here is the glaze. It's, it's Seltzer Chun. Very simple. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to glaze one for you means I have to put this on this tripod. So you have to give me a second here while I screw that in. Okay. So I hope that I think that should work pretty well. Okay, so let me just take one. And now what I'll do is here's the terracid. Basically I've already stirred this up. So I have a just a, just in there. But so I'm just going to go real quick on the bottom like that. And by getting it ready, what I'm saying is, you know, these glazes have been sitting around for a while, and they get thicker, and so sometimes you have to thin them out a little, and you have to fire a couple and see first, see how they're doing. So that now that's ready. I can handle it. Here's my glaze, Seltzer Chun. I think you can see it. Okay, so I'm going to just show you how I would glaze this. I, I get it into this little cup, and what I'm going to do is do my handle first. And then do my spout last because I don't want to clog it up. So 
left my spout a little, I can turn it over now and do it. Like I just, I don't want to run it in there because it'll clog it up real bad. And then right before I'm done, I will do one coat inside. Nice and thin, not real. I won't leave it in there real long. And then what I usually do is I don't let it come out this hole. I, let, I make it go out the top. And that's it. All right, I want you to make 10,000 of those and call me tomorrow. Bye-bye.